Hello, I'm back for the second episode in Katie Does RPGCE Placement! Yay! Um, since I'm on a roll, so I'll make another one. And this one I'm going to talk a little bit about books. Um, when I did my undergraduate degree, I didn't really see the value in reading and how it could sort of improve my practice. Since doing this one, I've got really into reading and really into seeing what people say about teaching and how you can make it better. So I'm going to talk you through a few of my books. I will leave a nice big reference list, but these are just literally a handful of the books that I've been loving um, whilst training. And actually I've done so much reading. Heck, <laughs> knowledge. Um, start with this one. It's one I got off Amazon for, I think it was a fiver, and it's called The Differentiation Pocket Book um, by Peter Anstey. Um, in my observations, a lot of the things that were picked up on was like my need to differentiate better. So I thought, oh, there must be a book on differentiation, and this one is beautiful. Um, it's only little, so it's quite useful to carry around. Um, and it's just got loads of different ways of like how you can plan for differentiation, inclusive learning. Um, like different plenaries and starters, um, things like that. Um, it's just amazing. It looks at like everything. So ability. What do we know about ability? Um, it's got a bit of Vygotsky in there. There's only put some of all Brooks. I can't say it. But you know what I'm talking about. Bloom's taxonomy. Um, you know, and it's just really good. Like I found it been really helpful for me and been really like it's given me some good ideas so like the self-assessment one and um, to inform planning that's something that I'm going to implement um, on my health and social care course work so I'm going to get them to say how do I feel about this and then I can say okay they need a little bit more bit, bit more help um, so that's good um, so yeah that's one really good book I recommend that this one is a really practical one um, called 100 Things Awesome Teachers Do. I bought this because I want to be the most awesome outstanding teacher I can be. Um, and it literally is, it lists um, 100 different things. And so the sections that it's in, oh this is by um, William M. 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 William M. 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 So, like, I'll give you an example. Idea one. <coughs> Tonsillitis still lingering there. Concentrate on learning, not teaching. So, is there any point in me doing an activity, like, that's marvellous and fun, if they're not going to learn anything? So, why am I going to do this really fun game of blockbusters if they're not going to learn anything? So, it's looking at things like that. Idea 25, keep it fresh. Think of new stuff to do, they don't always do like the same thing, you know. Um, I just really enjoy this book, I think it's really fun and practical, and I would definitely recommend it to your reading list. This one, classic Teacher's Toolkit. I think every teacher will know. Um, oh, this is by Paul Guinness, this is a library one because they're really expensive to buy, but as every teacher will know can be so hard thinking of like learning activities. I always thought I was quite a fun creative person and I feel like I've used up all my good ideas already. This book's great. It has so many different ideas. So like, let's see if we can find one. Just like, can't find them now. So, dicey business. So it's got like how and where you could apply it. So you could apply it in Languages, English, Technology, Science, Math, Citizenship, RE, PSC and Health Education. So, um, you know, that was brilliant. And so it tells you how to do the activity and how you can apply it to your class. So that's a great book when it comes to planning. The next one, uh, I got this for free, I don't know whether. This is the Dyslexia Friendly Teachers Toolkit um, and this is by... Barbara Pavey, Margaret Meehan and Sarah Davis and it's for three to eighteen year olds so it covers like the general curriculum um, and it's got everything so 
how to, to look at your activities, how to work with students, to keep phonics good practice points. Um, and it's got photocopyable, photocopyable pages. So it's got like true or false things on dyslexia. This is something I don't know a lot about and something I want to know a lot about. So this I, I really value and I really like. So yeah, I would recommend this one to your little library. I am slowly building. Um, this one, bit of gravel, preparing to teach in the lifelong learning sector. This is a great startup book, your first book as you start your PGCE. Um, it's got everything you could ever need to know and think about. And even though obviously I'm like near the end of my PGCE now, it's still great to look back on and write essays with. And I really like it. Bill Beadle, how to teach. This man is hilarious. This is such easy reading and he just thinks of new ways to do things. Um, ever since I saw him on the telly, I just thought, you are amazing. You're a fun teacher and I want to be like you. Um, and so he just comes up with like lots of little ideas and it's just so easy to like read. It's by Marjorie Boxall, this is Nurture Group from School um, because at my school we do do nurture groups, um, this is aimed at primary school um, but the thing is it's still relevant and you know people, um, it still has like a lot of the theory behind it, why we do it, um, how you should act as an adult, um, some of it is a little bit like child has a tantrum and you have to sort of think a teenager has a tantrum because they do. Um, so you've got to think about that and it's got like just things like food is experienced as caring so you know talking about how you'd use food and things like that like that's why we have breakfast in nature because you sit around a table and you talk about things and it's giving them a good start to the day and stuff like that um, and so this has been really key for me like gaining an understanding as to why my placement are doing what they are doing um, so if you ever work in a PRU where you have nurture groups I'd really recommend this as a fantastic read. Next, practical interventions for young people at risk. Now I bought this um, because obviously there are a lot of young people at risk in a PRU. We do a lot of intervention work and I'm also a youth worker so this can apply to both contexts. Um, and this is by Catherine Gelder. Now I've only just got this book but I really like it. It looks at things such as depression, self-harm, substance abuse, problematic sexual behaviour, mental health issues, peer mentoring, bullying um, and things like that and it looks at like your practice, how you can best work with these young people, what to not do, services, um, like it gives you definitions for things and further reading and I've just really enjoyed reading like from this because I've only just got it but um, it's just really good because obviously you do work with really sensitive cases in the Peru and I feel like this book is kind of like a good little backbone reading for when you're doing some intervention work which I have been involved in. Curriculum studies in the lifelong learning sector. So as part of my PGC we have to do um, an assignment on curriculum, different types of curriculum. This book is so easy to read. Um, it's got all the different ex like explanations of curriculum, you know, like hidden curriculum and spiral curriculum. Um, and I would just really recommend this. I think it's really good. Um, and this is by Tummins, Jonathan Tummins. Again, yeah, it's a fantastic book and really good for assignment writing. Obviously you need more than this book, but I found it really helpful um, just for like definitions and stuff for like starting my assignment um, and for helping structure it. Oh, nearly there, I promise. Reflective practice in education and training. This is part of, again, like the start of the same series, Achieving QCLS. Um, and this one's by Jodie Rothery Barrington and Richard Mothal. Some of these people have really hard names. Um, and this is like, I've used this to sort of think about reflective writing and the reason why I'm making videos is because I don't like writing. 
I do, but I, I kind of don't. Reflective writing I've always found pretty um, because I naturally do that with my colleagues. I'm always very much thinking about things, but I don't necessarily like writing it on paper. Um, and we've got all the different models of reflection, like Kolb, um, Gibbs is like expanded version of Kolb, um, and like why we do it. And I found this quite useful for writing my assignment, and it's got like examples of reflective writing. Because um, sometimes I think it is hard to write reflectively and know exactly like what they're looking for. Um, so yeah, good book. I should have chosen my nice book. This fun effect teaching in schools through and practice. I got this in a charity shop for two pounds ninety nine, and I tell you what, this book's like been an absolute amazing little bible of teaching practice. It covers. Oh, it's by. I can never say the name. Chris. The reference will be in the link below. Um, again, like, I'll go to the contents. It's like, um, effective teaching, how people learn, setting up the learning experience, blah, blah, blah. It's a great book. There's so much covered in it. Um, it's been really good for writing my assignments, for looking up different theories and ideas. Um, so, yeah, really recommend that. Yeah, there, penultimate one. Teaching teenagers. Um, I thought this would be fun, and it's like a way to sort of inspire and engage teenagers a bit more. Um, and oh my gosh, it's such an easy read, and it's got like toolbox idea little sections. Um, this is by Warren Kidd and Jerry. That name. Um, love it. It's got you know assessing strategies. Like it's got games. Like. Um, for group dynamic, it's just really good and an easy read and very new, relevant. I think was this book 2012 or 2013? 2012. So it was obviously quite a recent book, and I think it's really cool. Like it just it just makes it makes your teaching a bit more like teenager relatable. Um, and the last one is Bill Rogers' Classroom Behaviour. This has been a great book. Um, it covers everything you could ever imagine <laughs> um, to do with behaviour. So, like, it's just got like all the different things you can do, like tactical ignoring, which is something I've actually used with a young person. Nonverbal cueing, which is um, something that actually really works. It's like, like they say, the teacher look like this. Um, eye contact. Um, and things like, I've done, like, my tutor said this, standing behind students and my like, students not doing very well, just being like, on their work, and it does work. Um, so I found this really useful. Um, like, and it's generally quite positive, so it looks things like building relationships and having the relationships with your students, um, and, like, how to encourage good behaviour rather than focusing on, like, bad behaviour. Um, and so yeah, I think this has been a really great book. So as you can see, this is only a handful of books I've got in my house on teaching. Um, there's so much literature out there, but it is brilliant. Um, and there's so much I would recommend. So yeah, so there's some books. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Katie Does Her PGCE. Ah.